Hello everyone. I hope you are safe at home. I heartily welcome you to today's maths class. I am Shagufta. Before going to start the 6th standard syllabus, let us brush up the chapters which you have learnt in your previous classes. So, let's begin today's session. Let us recall the definition of ray. A ray is a part of a straight line which has a starting point called the initial point. So starting point is nothing but initial point but no end point. Look at the definition carefully. A ray is a part of the straight line part of the straight line which has the starting point and the starting point is also called as initial point and the other side has no end this arrow mark indicates that the uh, there is no end to this side one side there is an end you cannot extend the line this side okay but here there is you can extend this line as much as you want there is no end point this side so this is called as ray in simple of a straight line which has one end one initial point and there is no end point for that okay now let us recall the definition of an angle the figure formed by two rays sharing common initial point is called an angle already we know the definition of a ray ray is having one initial point and there is no end point for that okay so such kind of rays the two rays which has the same same initial point is called as an angle for example oa is an ray and ob is also a ray both has the same initial point that is o now let us recall the types of angles there are basically seven types of angles okay there are basically seven types of angle those are first one the zero angle which measures zero degree the second one is acute angle which lies between zero degree and 90 degree third one the right angle the right angle measures exactly 90 degree. The fourth one is obtuse angle. The measure of this angle lies between 90 degree and 180 degree. Straight angle which measures exactly 180 degree. Next the reflex angle which measures greater than 180 degree. And the last one is complete angle 360 degree. Let us learn once again zero angle which measures zero degree acute angle the measure of this acute angle lies between zero degree and 90 degree right angle which measures 90 degree obtuse angle the measure of this angle lies between 90 degree and 180 degree the straight angle which measures exactly 180 degree reflex angle that is greater than the 180 degree the last one complete angle which forms a circle that is 360 degree okay i hope you remember this which you have st already studied in your fifth standard let us move on to the next concept that is numbers this chapter also you have studied earlier in your fifth standard right next topic in this is successor and predecessor of a number see successor to find the successor of a number we have to add one to any given number okay read the rules once again to find the successor of a number we have to add one to any given number whichever number they may give you just have to add plus one to that number to get the successor of it for example look at the example here they have given find the successor of 5 the number 5 the solution given number is 5 as it is given in the question the 
given number is 5. So we have to find out the successor because they are asking here, find the successor, right? So successor of 5, what is the rules according to the definition? To find the successor of a number, we have to add 1. So successor of 5, so 5 plus 1. What is 5 plus 1? This 6. So successor of 5 is 6. Let me take you to another example, similar kind of example. See here, find the successor of 84. You can pause the video and try it out by yourself to solve. And then come back and check whether your answer is right or wrong. So here they are asking, find the successor of 84. So given number is 84, successor of 84. According to the rule, how to find out the successor, you should add plus 1 to given number. 84 plus 1 equals. So, 84 plus 1 is 85. Yeah. I hope you to have got the same answer. So, 85 is the right answer. Similarly, if I ask, find the successor of 89. What will be the answer? 89 plus 1 is 90. Predecessor. To find the predecessor of a number, we have to subtract 1 from any given number. Just like, just like in successor of a number, there we were adding plus 1 to any given number, right? Likewise, in the in, to find the predecessor of a number, we have to subtract 1 from any given number. Whichever number they may give, you just have to subtract 1 from that number. For example, look here, find the predecessor of 68. What is the number they have given? 68. So, the solution given number is 68, then predecessor of a Predecessor of 68 is equal to 68 minus 1. Here to find out the predecessor, we have to subtract minus 1. 68 minus 1 is equal to 67. To the successor, we have to add plus 1. Okay, we have to add 1. To find the predecessor, we have to subtract 1. That is the only difference. Let me give you another example. See the, see the example second. Find the predecessor of number 96. So the given number here it is 96. You can pause the video again and, and you can try to solve by yourself. So the given number is 96. How to find out the predecessor? Just subtract 1 from the given number. The given number is 96. Subtract 1 minus 1 is equal to 96 minus 1 is 95. Easy. You note down these questions as your home assignment. The first question is define an angle. You have to write the definition of an angle. Okay. The second one is what is the measurement of reflex angle. The third question is find the successor and predecessor of 77. I hope you have understood today's class and you will answer these questions. Thank you.